So you have to get in a tall level short game. What is it the best players in the world are doing to give them maximum versatility around the greens? They're not one dimensional and some of them are playing with a bit of scoop around the greens. Let's learn out what that secret is and how you can apply it to your game. Firstly guys, if you're new to the channel, welcome. What we're doing here is we're having a look at all areas of the game to help you lower your scores and improve and increase your enjoyment level of the game. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do hit the bell icon. That way you can get all the notifications going forward. And if you enjoy the videos, please give it a thumbs up. What we're going to be having a look at today is the short game. So having a look at two distinctly different styles of chipping. So we've got people have always been talking about maintaining the triangle, using that leading edge. And you even had Phil back in the day or still even now they talk about the hinge and the hold style and then we've got we are using the bounce a lot more but they're actually really using the wrists a lot is a flip like this a bad thing for your chipping so when we get the club going like this is that really just a big scoop and absolutely terrible for your game? Let's have a look at what the difference is with the two styles. So, first one, that hinge and hold style can be really good if we're playing a lot of running shots. And we're playing low shots that just have got a lot of green to play with and you want to run them out. They can be really, really good. But if that's your only way of playing a shot, sometimes you can find things difficult. So what we'd have is if we've got a short-sided shot, we can see that that shot's quite hard to come because the ball wants to fire off the face. So when you're doing that, you can see that ball wants to really chase out. If you play one where you've got more green to play with, it can be quite a decent shot. But the one where you're letting the hands work under can help create a softer shot. So on a nearer shot, it gets a bit of spin and check and it's easier to control, but it obviously gets the ball coming in a lot higher. So on long shots, it can still be a great way to play it because you can guarantee that strike and all you've got to focus on is merely the landing spots. Now, let's have a look at what the downside to that hinge and hold style can be. One of the things is that people can actually thin these a lot because what they're almost doing is driving the hands forwards and the leading edge doesn't get to the floor. So because of this, the handle's leading in a long way and they almost hit these like low scully thins. Now, when they actually do that, they think... I've done the opposite, I must have been doing this. So what they do is they do it even more. And now what they're doing is, the more you put the hands forward, the further off the ground that club's getting, so the more that they end up thinning it. So then what they do is, because they're so desperate to not thin it, is they stab it. Big stick in the floor here, because the sharp point is that leading edge, in, or even the heel, and it creates a digging action. So that is not what you're wanting. So let's have a look at it. You, if you are going to play this shot, you just need to make sure you maintain that triangle and don't drive the handle forward. If you are driving it forward, it creates problems in strikes. So you're basically presetting the shaft and then learning to just turn back, turn through, it can hit the green and then it sort of runs its way up. But having a look at this from the other standpoint of what we see lots and lots of tall players doing, Loads of great players are oh, using the hands. Is this really a scoop? Well, I'm trying to do this when I'm chipping. But the big thing is I'm also turning. So when we're turning and using the hands, we can create different flights of shots. So I'm now not no longer one dimensional. Can really change what the setup does and lots of different things to create different shots. But that idea of the hands working is vital. So what you want to actually do is Make sure that the arms stay connected to the body. The big key is that the right elbow and the side of the body come back and through together and that right hand can work under. So once we've gone back, we've got this bit of hinge in the wrist, then we can let that right hand work under and the elbow stays on the side of the body. And at the end of the follow through, provided the chest and the arms have matched, that left wrist will have created a bit of cup here as the hand has worked back as the right hand has worked under. So this will create a softness and height to the shot. So it's almost like you're trying to throw the club under the ball whilst making sure that you're still turning the body. So as you've gone back, this is like throwing that club under the ball and it's really, really soft. It spins and stops so, so, so much faster. So what we're going to be looking at is that this creates the versatility. It means we're not engaging with the floor as much. So then what you can do is with this, you can change your ball position. You can have a back ball position, 
So just have a look at this from here. You could see that if I play it there, we have a back ball position. And from there, even though there is you know, a little bit of shaft lean, I can still from there let that hand work under. If I then play one that's a middle ball position, so the shaft's more level, this will have the right hand will work under a little bit more, create a little bit more height on the shot. And then we have a final one where the ball position's further forwards, the hands are back, more loft on the club, same idea again, that right hand will work under, and it creates even more height and softness on the shot. So the idea is that those three bits there are what that versatility is going to give you. The low shot's a great, great shot. If you play loads of links golf, it can be a phenomenal shot for you to have because you're going to run a lot of shots in. But as we saw this year at Royal Port Rush, not all links golf courses are going to be flat and let you run that ball in. So no matter where you play your golf, you've got to have versatility if you want to have a tall level short game. As always, guys, thanks for watching. Hope you've enjoyed it. Make sure you give it a thumbs up, and I'll talk to you again really soon.